Hey guys, Kevford here. Today I've got 100 custom training shots designed to improve your double taps. This is optimized for PC players who can use packs mod. Now we'll take a look at a pro example, go through some setup, and then get right to looking at the packs. We'll take a look at one of my favorite players here, Monkey Moon on BDS. He is the best at simple, efficient movement to get a double tap. This is undefendable. That's the quality we're gonna look for in our training today. So let's set up some box mod customization. Go to Injector, click Open Box Mod Folder, click on Binds.cfg, and open Notepad. You should see some lines in there. That's cool. Just copy paste the code from the description, add it to the end, save it, and you should be all set. Now go ahead and launch your game. Go to F2, go to the Bindings tab. You should see several settings for key names, F12, F10, F7, and so on. If you click on F10, which is the one we'll be using today, you should see the code separated onto several lines. Now go to the Custom Training tab, Enable Custom Training Variants. If you want to remove these settings and go to Defaults, then set your boost limit to negative 1 and disable Custom Training Variants. Now we're going to be using Variants today, so I'm going to check mark that. I'm going to hit F10 7 times since it opens Network Graphs and then open F2, and I should see that my settings have all set up with the boost limit at 70 and high player start velocity range. Then let's open up training, custom training. You're gonna take that code on the right and enter it into browse, then enter code. Here's the second pack, which uses F7 settings. It has slightly slower starting speed and 64 boost. So you can try either of these settings and see which one feels best for you. Now, as a demonstration, I'll open up that first pack, the F10 one, and we're going to attempt at hitting these with speed and quality, much like that of a pro player. So you should feel a little bit of that starting momentum. If it's too fast, you can use F7 uh, and see which one you prefer. The rest of this video is 100 plus examples of me making these shots. I'll narrate over some clips, but I've designed it in a way for you to refer to this video while you practice. Have it open on a phone or a second screen next to you. See if you can mimic my techniques, and if it's difficult, slow it down to 50% speed in YouTube, analyze it, study it, and then try to copy from there. Take a look at how I'm using air roll to counteract the recoil of the bull, and that allows me to hit it really hard and accurately. On this one, I love using this dodge control method of going upside down, diagonal dodge with the flip cancel. Something you can try, a lot of pro players love using that. Here's one where if I tried hitting the back wall initially, it would be very predictable and slow. So I go for the ceiling. It's not super easy, but for a player on the back wall or sitting in their net, it's almost undefendable. Shot 9, if you pick up a couple pads and manage your boost right, it can result in a ceiling flip reset. Here we can use a double jump to just whip this into the ceiling curve and then you can try to follow it. This one you have to do a fair amount of driving on the ground, get on the other side of the ball and then go for the double tap. This is a pretty common RLCS shot as a lot of players like to cheat up on the redirect and then they'll hit that with that pace and quality. Here's another ceiling self pass. I sprinkled a few of these in. I mean, look at how difficult that would be to defend. On some of these redirects, throw them into the ceiling curve. See if you can read it. If it's gonna go straight down, you just aim for slightly underneath the crossbar. And some of these setups require you to boost down, have some car control, something you can work on on workshop maps, doing uh, upside down training. Here's a wall technique that incorporates a ceiling self pass using a dodge, something you try. And you can also whip these into the ceiling that then hits the back wall, and that's also really unpredictable for defenders. This one's more of a bread and butter RLCS level pro double tap. You know, they you'll see that so often. They'll hit it as hard as they can, follow it as fast as they can, and they just seem to score those from the gap so small. Here's another cool technique. You might want to slow that down, rewatch it. That actually punches me into the ceiling and I get that ceiling reset. 
I think now's a good time to point out the arrow I'm doing right as I'm hitting the ball. That counteracts a lot of that recoil effect and allows you to hit the ball really hard. This technique, I use the top shell of my car. In the middle, there's no recoil there and I get a really fast double tap. Shot 25 is also pretty good for ceiling resets. You can use the front nose of the car, the side actually, to mitigate that recoil. Here's another top shell technique with very limited recoil. Really good when you're close to the back wall. You don't have a lot of time or space to set up that second touch and adjust. This one's great for flip resets since you're coming in so fast. And even that wheel touch is enough to get you a good rebound. This time I hit the ball with the side of my car and I get no recoil, so it leads to a really fast double tap. Here's a couple close range techniques, the flip reset into the dodge. If you want to go for something a little simpler, you can go for the top shell technique, no recoil. Give me ample time to adjust. Here's a corner wall double tap. It's something you can try. I got about 1 out of 50. It's super hard technique, but it's something you can do when you know someone's going to be on the back wall. Try to be creative when you're coming off the wall. Here I use a front flip into a quick dodge. That was high quality. There's so many different techniques you can do if you get creative. Another side door, side of the car, no recoil technique. Sometimes you'll jump, find you're in front of the ball, so you can kind of point back, use the top shell technique, and sink the double tap. In contrast, I'm behind the ball in this one, so I use air roll, hit into the ceiling curve, and I just have a good guess about where it's gonna go. I got a perfect execution on this. Supersonic the entire time, laser tap, that's what we're looking for. You might have noticed I haven't covered the second touch yet. You can do all sorts of air roll, trying to hit different parts of the car. The important thing is to get creative with it and try many techniques. And when you watch pro play, study their technique. See if you can use these shots and master those finishes. If you put 10 to 20 hours into these packs, your car control, your precision, your touches are going to improve so much. It's going to make a huge difference in your game. See if you can do 20 to 30 minutes of practice just for a few weeks every time you hop on. Speaking of getting creative, here's three examples for the same shot. The first one I spike it into the ground, try to follow with my dodge. This one I save my dodge and dodge right after it. And this one I'm going for a high technique. Try to hit it into the ceiling and then read the back wall. Now we're onto the second pack, hence the lower boost. That's the F7 setting with the 64 boost and lower momentum. This one's a pretty versatile setup. If it doesn't pop off the wall like this, then you can do an air dribble, flip reset, double tap, a lot of things you can do. On this one, make sure you get really straight aligned with the ball so that when you double jump, uh, you're not dealing with a ton of recoil. That's a bread and butter pro technique, something you want to master.
One of the things I love to do with the top shelf technique is to move into a flat spin where I just hold the stick to the side and then take that into a finish. These next two shots really illustrate why it's important to be upside down and then dodge and flip cancel. I exit the dodge with my nose pointing upwards, meaning I can boost up and adjust to get that second touch. This shot really tested my car control only made possible by the sheer number of hours I put into upside down aero car control training. This one set up for a rebound double tap, however I found those really hard to do because there's so much recoil, so this one I put into the ceiling and then go for a ceiling self pass. Here's a cool one that's pretty low down where you save the dodge, deal with the recoil, and then you use that next dodge to help make your shot. Here's another setup that I had to whip into the ceiling, then boost down to the bowl. Did you find that boosting down part difficult? That's where you'll want to go into a workshop map, put on inverse gravity, and practice until those blackout moments no longer happen. Rebound double tap? So difficult. I use so much arrow to deal with the recoil there. Right, compare that to a redirect, there's almost no recoil. There's that upside down dodge off the wall again. It's a diagonal dodge with the flip cancel. It gives me that extra ability to adjust. Some of these shots will require you to use some power slide to get into position for the double tap. Especially this one, the bread and butter double jump technique. There's so much recoil that goes into that shot if you don't line yourself up. So you'll need to master power slide turning. Here's that Devo shot from Season 5 Land. It's an iconic shot in Rocket League history and something I had a lot of fun trying to hit. As we wrap up with the last few shots, I just want to shout out my childhood friend Yan Beats, who provided all the awesome background music. He has a YouTube channel in the description, and if you ever need good music for a video, his stuff is free to use provided you properly attribute it to him. 
Lastly, thanks for watching, and I hope you guys get the improvement in double taps you're looking for. Peace.